This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi, welcome back to the channel. Okay, we've got a lot of stuff to go through tonight. As you've seen the title of this video, um, we're going to be talking to the captain of the yacht 007, which is uh, capsized in Kithnos, in, on the island of Kithnos in Greece. Uh, I've got a few quick stories to go through first. Uh, first one is in the last video, we said that Motor Yacht Nord was heading to Hong Kong. Uh, the vessel has now arrived in Hong Kong. I've had quite a lot of people contacting me saying, hey, did you know Motor Yacht Nord's in Hong Kong? Uh, well, yeah, because I actually said that the vessel was heading there in a video from like four or five days ago. But yeah, the vessel is in Hong Kong. It sailed there from Vladivostok. Uh, don't know where the vessel's going next, but I would imagine, well, I'm almost certain that that is not the final destination. Uh, employment laws in Hong Kong are quite strict on vessels staying. I think it's about a month is the maximum stay they can have. So anyway, we'll keep you updated when the vessel moves from there, but as so far, she's in Hong Kong. Okay, so we'll move on to the next story. Uh, the 85 meter or 280 foot yacht Amore Vero, you might remember this story. This boat was arrested or frozen by the French authorities in March of this year. It's one of the first vessels to be uh, frozen. She is belonged, or she was alleged to, to belong to Igor Sechin. She did, she did belong to him at one point. He argues that he no longer owns that vessel. Uh, but the vessel is still owned by a company that is registered in his name. Sources have told me that the vessel has been uh, possibly been to court and overturned the freezing order on this boat as the vessel has been looking for a ten, uh, it's looking to tender for fuel so they're looking to buy fuel they've been contacting companies saying we want to buy fuel and the companies have been contacting others to ask if it's if it's okay to sell them fuel this is the way it works now with the know your uh, know your client rules and so there's a possibility that vessel might be on the move now we've been unable to confirm this story independently but if that is true, then that vessel could be leaving La Ciota very soon. We'll keep you updated on that, of course. All right, now there's another story which is very similar, and we're kind of wondering if these stories have been somehow mixed up, but another Russian billionaire who had a freezing order against his boat was um, a chap called Alexei Kuzmichev. Now, we mentioned this in a recent video. He has two boats. Both of them are called Le Petit Oeurs, uh, one of them is called Le Petit OS 2. Now, one of them is in Antibes, but I believe it's in a dry dock facility in Antibes. The other one was in Cannes. Now, he appealed the arrest of both of these vessels. Now, he's had some good luck, actually, or some good fortune, should I say, is that the Paris Court of Appeals on Wednesday ruled that French customs moved to board and immobilize Le Petit OS in the coastal city of Antibes in mid-March, and, and they said it was irregular and annulled the raid. So that vessel has been technically unfrozen. Now the judges decided, however, on the second lawsuit concerning Le, P Le Petit OS 2, which was immobilized a week later in Cannes, that uh, should have been filed in a different court. So they did not make any ruling on it. Now that has gone to the other courts for a ruling. I don't know whether this means that vessel is going to be going anywhere soon. I would imagine if the courts overturned it just because of a, a clerical error or something like that, then. I would imagine they will immediately file one that doesn't have that error in and that should result in the freezing again. I, but I, it's just a hypothesis. So we'll keep you updated on whether or not that vessel leaves. Now, one other story before we get to the main story. This is about a yacht called Moti Yacht Graceful. Uh, it was uh, generally known as a, a yacht belonging to Vladimir Putin. It was in Germany in a shipyard until about two weeks before the invasion of Ukraine and the vessel hightailed it out of uh, the German shipyard before the work that was being carried out on it was completely finished. And then it, it went at speed to Kaliningrad, turning off its AIS and, and poof, disappeared, right? So the vessel hasn't been seen pretty much since then. Until the end of September, the vessel was spotted off the coast of Estonia with a new name. Uh, still not broadcasting AIS, of course, because now apparently it's, it's uh, not compulsory. But the boat is registered in Russia, so um, yeah, good luck uh, enforcing any rules on it. But the new name of this boat is, is Kosatka, which translated into English means killer whale. Interesting. Another thing I found interesting is the, is the company that owns this vessel, 
officially is called argument. <laughs> so uh, quite interesting. Anyway, guys, onto the main story. And this is the captain of 007. Uh, he spoke to us on a phone call recently. We had a, over an hour conversation with him. And we're going to go through some of it now. Now, I was planning to use his voice, his audio, to make this video a little bit more dynamic. But he said that he didn't want that. So I've agreed that what I'll do is I'll read both parts and I'll just put on the screen what he says. I'll read it out and I'll put the quotes on the screen. He said that the yacht was 100% seaworthy when she left the shipyard. Everything was checked thoroughly except one thing, the water maker, which needed new membranes. Now this is a reverse osmosis machine which basically takes salt water and the water is forced through a series of membranes and that takes out all of the salt and everything and you're left with uh, clean water. He said there were five crew plus himself when the ship left the shipyard and um, he also said that, and this is important for later on, he also said that in the shipyard, which they apparently didn't notice until after they left the shipyard, that the GPS antenna was moved, and I, uh, I think he means damaged, when they, when they were installing scaffolding during that yard period. Okay, so we moved on to the night of the accidents. He said that she was traveling from Agena to Naxos with a stop in Kithnos. Uh, where a second captain was supposed to join in Naxos. The yacht was heading to Bodrum afterwards where final tests were meant to be carried out, but also the vessel was due to go into a dry dock period, which is kind of confusing to me. So generally, after you have a, 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 a shipyard period and you have changes made to certain things on board, when you go back into the water, the vessel has to have a sea trial uh, to to uh, to satisfy the classification, or, and then the boat can go into operation. But this seems to suggest that that didn't happen, and it was going to happen when they got to uh, to Bodrum, which is where the shipyard period was meant to happen. Well, so I don't, I don't, I, I was never able to clarify any further on that subject. Uh, the shipyard. This is something that I tried to clarify a number of times on the phone call. Uh, he did He did not say which shipyard the yacht was at prior to the sailing. Now, we were told by other sources that the, that the shipyard the vessel was in was Atlas Shipyard in Turkey. Now, uh, but we asked him on numerous occasions during the phone call, plus after the phone call, I texted, I was communicating with him on, on a text messaging system and I contacted him three times, three separate days, and I asked him, to please clarify the shipyard that you were in before the accident. And he never got back to me on that, on that uh, question. Anyway, he said that before the accident, the yacht had been at anchor near the island of Kithnos and was heading to Merihas, which is a, a town in, on the island of Kithnos. So I asked the question, uh, when you left your previous location, did you not plot a chart on your Ectus? Uh, and I asked, you have Ectus, right? The Ectus is Electronic Chart Display and Information System. It's basically a digital map. Uh, it's, bit, it's like sat nav for a boat, ba basically. Uh, and he said, yes, yes, we have charts. Uh, we, uh, no, because we were going straight and we were on anchor previously. We use it when we are on long distance. On a long distance, we do that. But on a short distance, we didn't do that because we were nearby. We don't always plot a chart. I find that quite um, shocking uh, to say that. Uh, I think it's, I think, um, you know, you should always plot a chart, especially when you're sailing at night. Anyway, uh, the question, uh, at the time of the accident, there were three crew plus yourself, right? And he said, no, there were five crew in total. So four crew plus him. Now that's contrary to a report that we saw that says that there were three deckhands plus the captain. Um, he says there were four crew and he said one of them was a mechanic. But he also said that you, as on a vessel of that size, you're not required to have a mechanic or an engineer on board. Uh, I was on the bridge. This is his quote again. I was on the bridge with the deckhand. He asked if he could go to make a coffee. I told him yes. There was another crew member on the stairs on his phone. And boom, impact on the bulbous bow. Uh, what was the location of the impact? Can you send me a chart where the impact happened? Yes, he said, I can do that. However, 
as up until today, he has not sent me that. So I don't, I can't show you on the map exactly where this impact happened because he's never sent it to me. So, so then he went on to say, at Kelowna Beach, there are rocks on the way to Merihas. If you see the cruise liners, the ferries that are going to Merihas, you can see their lines on the map. We were supposed to be over there, but unfortunately on the GPS, which I assume he means the Ectus, you don't see the lines of the ferries, but you see it on Google Maps, um, but not on his Ectus. He says, uh, so he says, we were supposed to be over there where the lines are taking the ferries to Merihas, but in reality, we were much closer to land. He said, I reversed immediately because I didn't want the ship to sink in deep waters because the tanks would implode and you would have high pollution. My next question was, if the impact was on the bulbous bow, there shouldn't have been any danger of the vessel sinking. Uh, as there is an impact bulkhead after that point, I'll show you on, uh, on, a, on a diagram here of what an impact bulkhead is. It is effectively after the bulbous bow, you have a bulkhead that goes all the way down. It's welded, it cannot be opened. So I asked him, why would it be sinking if, you know, if that bulkhead is intact? He said, correct, but we already had water in the lower cabins, so maybe it broke something. And then we went to check and it was full of water, so we didn't want to take a chance. So we went to Kelowna, the sandy ground in Kelowna Beach, to avoid imploding the fuel tank, which would have happened at around 60 meters. This is a quota. Uh, we honked the horn with all the lights on and we grounded. Why was the vessel in danger of sinking? If you have so many watertight compartments, if you have five, which he was suggesting there were five watertight compartments and you have, uh, you have one filled uh, or even two, then the vessel shouldn't be under threat of sinking. Also, I was never able to establish exactly how many bulkheads there were. I asked him to send me through a general arrangement of the vessel, uh, you know, a diagram, and he wouldn't do it. He said he was not allowed to send me a general arrangement. I, I was never able to establish what he meant by not allowed. Also, I asked why was there no working AIS signal at the time of the accident? He initially said that it was not a requirement to have AIS. So then I read the IMO statements that uh, all passenger vessels, regardless of size, must broadcast AIS whilst underway or at anchor. He then said the AIS unit was broken and a technician had, had meant to install a new one. He said that uh, he had to order it and he was meant to be coming along the way to install it, but that never happened. All right, so I've got some other points here. Uh, the captain also told me that he is not the owner of the vessel. I don't quite understand that. He says that a company owns it, but we all know that uh, a lot of the time, well, almost always, the boat is owned by a company. They set up a company, usually in the British Virgin Islands or in the Cayman Islands. They register the boat to that company. Um, but he says he's not even the ulti ultimate beneficial owner. So it, it possibly could be a family member or somebody else who works for him. Uh, or obviously it could be somebody completely unrelated. Um, the captain also seems to suggest, uh, although he never said it specifically, that the damage to that GPS antenna meant that they were off course. Now, I, I asked him on multiple occasions, are you saying that the damage to your GPS unit meant that you were off course? He never answered that question. Uh, during our research, we found a Greek newspaper that's, that uh, had a quote from the wife of the person who we believe to be the owner of the vessel, who says he's not the owner, the captain, uh, and she quoted saying that that was the reason that they were off by 10 degrees because of the GPS fault. So that's what they seem to be suggesting, although he never said that to me directly on the phone call. Now, one of the things I was never able to establish, I mentioned it earlier, was that that he would not tell me the name of the shipyard the boat was in having this work done on before. Now we were told through reports, through a contact, that the, ves the vessel had been at Atlas Shipyard in Turkey. However, we were contacted by Atlas Shipyard and they sent a statement and they said, please be advised that what you stated about At Atlas Shipyard is totally wrong information to the public. The yacht has never been to Atlas Shipyard and our clients did not provide any kind of service whatsoever. Uh, Atlas Shipyard mainly focuses on construction of tankers, dry bulk vessels, tugs, and live fishing vessels. Atlas Shipyard never carried out repairs services to yachts in general, and also never built a yacht. 
Atlas Shipyard mainly focuses on tankers. It doesn't say the only focus on. And it says Atlas Shipyard never carried out repair services to yachts in general and also never built a yacht. So we never said it was built there. We said it was in that shipyard. But they're saying that it wasn't. Now, I went back to the captain and I said, uh, Atlas is saying your vessel was never in that shipyard. So which shipyard was it? But he wouldn't tell me. He never told me. Uh, I was hoping to get a lot of answers um, through this conversation and I think I came out at the end of it with more questions. I don't know what you think about it. Please let me know in the comments down below about this. Uh, what do you think? So I've tried to be as thorough as possible about what he told me. Obviously, I can't tell you the whole conversation because it was over an hour and I've tried to put in the pertinent points into this story. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, I will leave it there. It's been a long one, but I hopefully it's been an interesting one. Let me know what you think. If you've got any information about that story, specifically about that story, if you worked in Atlas Shipyard in the past and you know that vessel was there, please get in touch. Or if you know where that yacht was, which shipyard it was in before, like I think August it left the shipyard. If you know where it was, please get in touch and let us know. If you've got any information about any other stories, please get in touch also. You know how to do that. You can go through the about page of the YouTube channel. You can get us on Instagram. You can get us on Threema and you can also get us on a Facebook Messenger. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for future notifications. And I'll catch up with you soon, guys. All right. Bye bye.